Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the uh, February 15th uh, regular Board of Supervisors meeting. And I'd like to start off with, uh, we'll call the meeting to order, of course, and uh, start off with a moment of silence. And uh, we have a moment of, moment of silence for Kyle Shastine, an employee. And I'd like to um, give the uh, floor to Director Scott DeLeon. And Mr. Chair, if you can give us just a minute, we have a photo to post. And, then direct and we're going to put up a photo. So Matthew, if you would. There we go. There we go. Thank you. All right. Great. Uh, good morning, board. Um, yeah, this is a second week in a row that I've come to your board to request a dedication, and uh, it'll be okay with me if I never have to do this again. But unfortunately, um, I do need to request that you dedicate this morning's moment of silence to Kyle Shastine. Kyle was a member of the Upper Lake Road crew, and he unexpectedly passed away last week. Uh, Kyle was hired as a maintenance worker in the road department in August of 2020, and he was working his way up the ladder in our organization. Uh, he had obtained his Class A driver's license, and he was working on learning how to operate the various pieces of equipment we use. And as you can see in the picture that we provided, it shows Kyle working on Elk Mountain Road in, in one of our graders. Uh, when talking with his coworkers about Kyle, uh, the words cheerful, positive, and dependable are used pretty frequently. Uh, our road crews work together through really challenging conditions and they become a family and Kyle was certainly a beloved member of the Upper Lake crew. Uh, Kyle was a collegiate football player and as I understand it, he played for Missouri State and achieved all American honors. Uh, he was also an avid outdoorsman. Uh, he will be greatly missed by our entire department and on behalf of the department of public works i offer his family and friends our deepest condolences thank you all right Supervisor Sabatier, can you lead us in the pledge, please? Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Move on to item four, consideration of extra items not appearing on the posted agenda. CEO Hutchinson. Yes, Mr. Chair, I do expect to have an extra agenda item um, that I'll bring forth a little later in the meeting. Um, since you have folks here waiting for timed items, um, we can uh, work on that after the timed items are complete, if that works for you. That works for me. So we'll just come back to this after a little later. Yes. So we'll move on to item five. And come back to item four later. Approval of the consent agenda. Consent agenda items are all, are usually non-controversial items that we pass in one motion. However, if somebody desires to pull from the Board of Supervisors or from the public, free to do so as of now. So is there anything anyone would like to pull? Supervisor Sabatier? Yeah, I'd like to uh, ask some questions for item 5.1 and also pull for clarification and correction on item 5.9. 5 5.1 and 5.9. Uh, anyone from the public? I don't see anybody in uh, the chambers, and it's not looking like I have anyone on Zoom. So uh, we'll bring it back for action. Mr. Chair, I move to approve consent agenda items 5.2 to 5.8 and 5.10. I have a motion. Second. And I have a second. Uh, Johanna, can you please conduct the roll call? Okay, Supervisor Simon. Yes. Supervisor Sabatier? Aye. Supervisor Scott? Aye. Supervisor Paiska? Yes. And Supervisor Crandall? Yes. Thank you. All right. Uh, we'll move on to uh, public input. Um, this uh, is uh, for the public to 
discuss anything that's not covered on the agenda and note that we uh, as the board will not address uh, any of your um, items brought to this uh, comment section um, in, unless it's put on the agenda and if you're discussing something that's on the agenda I will uh, do my best to uh, guide you to another agenda item that may be covered later so um, if I'm cutting you off in this realm, it's not because I don't want you to speak. It's because I think there's a time you can probably fit your discussion into another agenda item. So we'll go ahead and open it up for public input. Is there anyone in the chambers? I'm not seeing anyone. So go to Zoom. I have someone on uh, the Zoom uh, phone, 4627. If you can unmute, you have three minutes. Uh, good morning, everybody. <clears throat> this is Tom Slate with a short piece to read. I would like to speak to what happened at last week's meeting, Public Input. I found out after the meeting that my call was very, very broken. It was from my home on a phone that was virtually never a problem. I hope Eddie did not cut the microphone. There is, of course, a switch the chair has, or at least used to have, that can cut the microphone to the video recording broadcast. <clears throat> Mic cutting has happened to me before, January 10th, 2012. The chairman cut the mic while I was speaking respectfully. I did not know at the time. The PA system sound in the room was not affected. The video record shows me speaking and then silence as I continued. The recording shows the video technician, normally located in a booth at the back of the room, hurriedly approaching the chair, chairman, apparently concerned about the loss of sound. The chair, of course, fully aware, simply waved him off, dismissed him. The video record shows the chair passing a note to the supervisor on his right. Several supervisors could be, appear to be quite amused about something. wonder what that could be. I have the video, but also an email confirmation from a Lake County uh, government source that, yes, indeed, the mic had been cut. Last week, though, was the worst supervisor being I've ever seen. The chairman expressed rude, defensive, and angry behavior. It was only public input, for God's sakes instantly cutting the mic at three minutes while the callers were still speaking without the normal customary notice to complete the thought, then stop. It is common courtesy. One caller was, based on the video record, cut after two minutes and 20 seconds. This behavior is out. It's scandalous in my opinion, but from my extensive experience in Lake County, not surprising at all. The chair was breaking a fundamental rule not to comment and editorialize, interrupted with a 37 second non sequitur distraction that had nothing to do with the concerns and potentially life-saving COVID information expressed once again by the callers. People are dead, people are dying, the last I heard, people on vents. There's much credible information available to conclude that some, possibly most of this, could have been prevented. Yet disrespecting and verbally attacking the callers continues at supervisor meetings. The last I heard, Eddie's mom was on a vent. Whatever the situation now, if it's not too late, I wish her well, of course. God bless Eddie's mom. God forgive you, Eddie. Shame on you. That goes for all of you. Wake up. Just want to make sure you're finished. And my hands are on the table, so I'm not cutting you off. That's fine. Okay. I'm done. Okay. Thank you for your comments. Greatly appreciate them. And uh, we didn't cut you off last week, and we wouldn't do that. So thank you. Supervisor Spati? I just want to say I have no knowledge of any button at the chair level that controls the audio. Um, there is absolutely zero controls other than your own microphone in front of you. So it's fine. They, they're allowed to project or whatever the case may be. It's fine. So uh, next, it looks like we have Julia Bono. Julia Bono, please unmute, and uh, you have three minutes. Uh, thank you, sir. Um, my name is Julia Bono. I have background and degrees in scientific research. I wanted to speak to the board and its audience today about the harms caused by the currently available COVID-19 vaccines that have been reported to the CDC's Vaccine Adverse Event Reporting System, or VAERS, database, and they're summarized um, on a page called Open VAERS. Since many of these are severely severe harms associated with COVID vaccination, healthcare providers are legally required to report them, although some official estimates like the Lazarus, Lazarus report suggest that as few as 
1% of adverse events are actually reported. The latest VAERS data through uh, February 4th, 2022, um, shows that there have been a total of uh, 23,615 deaths, 127,855 hospitalizations, 118,076 urgent care um, uh, reports, uh, 171,408 doctor's office visits, 9,119 anaphylaxis events, 13,784 Bell's palsy events, including someone I know personally. Um, uh, there's also um, uh, 3,991 miscarriages, 12,069 heart attacks, including my sister-in-law, uh, 32,432 myocarditis pericarditis events, 42,260 permanently disabled individuals, 5,551 thrombocytopenia, low platelet um, events, 26,836 life-threatening events, 39,440 severe allergic reactions, and 12,346 shingles. Um, all vaccine related, to put this in perspective, all vaccine related deaths reported uh, in 2021 were just 421. That is for all vaccines. While this year has already seen reports of over 23,000 vaccine related deaths and it's far from over. With respect of, to the time frame from COVID vaccination to death, the substantial majority of cases died within two days of vaccination. I also, um, my emphatic contention is that these, based on the data, is that these experimental COVID vaccines should not be misrepresented to the public as safe, nor should members of the public be encouraged, pressured, and or mandated to take these vaccines if they prefer not to and are understandably concerned about adverse vaccine events versus the risk of actually getting COVID, which is asymptomatic to mild in the vast majority of cases and hardly ever fatal among minors. Um, and that particularly applies to the current strain, um, the current Omicron strain. Um, I further contend that virtually everyone already knows that COVID vaccines exist. So so if they have not taken one by this point, they probably don't want to. Finally, uh, and this is where I really require a response from the Board of Supervisors. I've met, I have brought to this Board of Supervisors attention via email, certified mail, and in these Zoom calls, the severe election irregularities that occurred on January 13th at the Middletown Area Town Hall math meeting. But I have yet to receive a response. I ask again before this board in public, has my complaint been received and when will it be responded to? Thank you. Thank you. Just making sure that uh, you don't have anything else to say. I know she said thank you, but being extra cautious. There we go. It's the three minutes. All right. So that's the, uh, we have one last person, and Nikki Hind, uh, apparently Dr. Nikki Hind. And Nikki, can you um, elaborate what your, spe what your field is in with your doctorate before you start? Hi, uh, my name is Nikki Hines, and I, I hope you're not including this in my three minutes. No, I'm not. I'm not. Just want to know. Graduated from Stanford University with a Doctor of Musical Arts, 1997. Okay, excellent. So now you're. 1998. I'm sorry, 1998 it was. Okay, that's nice to know. Thank you. Well, you can start now, and we'll give you your three minutes. Uh, um, my name is Nikki Hind. As I was saying last week, the board's COVID proclamations and mandates are not like any other business item. And let me just say that regarding all the other business this board conducts, I have no problem. In fact, I applaud the supervisor's work. This does not mean I agree with everything, but I am happy to let the supervisors do the work for which they were duly elected. And I'll just add that I've been living in Lake County myself since 2005, peacefully enjoying life amidst our beautiful surroundings, never once even attended a Board of Supervisors meeting. The Board's COVID mandates are not like any other business because they are not authorized by statute. They are extra legal, authorized solely by the state of emergency declared by Gavin Newsom, citation of which is included in the first paragraph of all the board's COVID resolutions. Therefore, it is entirely reasonable, nearly two years later, to question the cause for this emergency here in our county, a cause for which the board has assumed extraordinary, unprecedented and extra legal powers. The continuation of emergency authorized mandates without due question of the reality of the claimed emergency indicates a dangerous precedent, a disturbing potential for a slide into authoritarian rule by decree. 
and when questioned regarding the cause for the emergency, if it cannot be properly justified or even articulated, this is indeed alarming. The board cannot abdicate its responsibilities to the people of this county and cannot ignore their oaths of office. It is incumbent upon them to independently evaluate the basis for a medical emergency in this county, a condition that must rise to a sufficient level of threat as to justify A, ongoing departure from the domain of statutory business, and B, massive intrusions into the constitutional rights and natural freedom of county residents. Based on that, it is clear that the board should immediately roll back all COVID measures, free the people of Lake County from medical tyranny, and confine itself entirely to the traditional domain of statute authorized business. Thank you very much. Thank you. Are you finished? I have finished. Thank you very much. I'd also much. like to direct you to item 7.2, which is later on on the, we're not sure exactly when that will be. However, when it does, it sounds like a lot of what you had discussed in public input could have been put there. Um, so just giving you that insight. Okay. Thank you for your comments. Next, um, I think this person already spoke, um, but I'll check. Phone 1113? No. Oh, okay. Phone 1113, you have three minutes. Yes. Hi. Um, Dr. Will Tuttle, and I'd like to address the uh, COVID situation in Lake County uh, regarding uh, actually what the just real quick, if we could pause for a few minutes so I can just, uh, I'd just like to ask again, because I don't remember knowing, um, understanding what your doctorate is in. Uh, yeah, I have a PhD from Berkeley uh, in education. Okay, thank you. And uh, that's uh, actually given me, i to say, a lot of insight into the corruption of science, because I took courses in quantitative and qualitative methods of research, which Dude, doctors never do, actually. Start time. They just learn uh, how to, uh, but I'll, this will be part of my team, that's all I won't. And I, I just want to say that's one of the main points I want to make, is that doctors are not scientists. Doctors don't learn how to do science, obviously. And they learn protocols, and they learn how to, uh, how to treat illnesses and so forth, but they have to stay within parameters that are laid down by the AMA. And so uh, what the gentleman before me was, he mentioned medical tyranny. I think that's what, what you as supervisors are really required to do is to make sure to protect the people of Lake County from the corruption of the medical system yeah, yeah. where science is being, I'm sorry? Sorry, we didn't unpause your time, but uh, keep going. Yes, please. Okay. Um, so. That there's, there's this so-called science has become a death cult, really. It's a very dangerous, and the whole world is supposed to pretend that COVID vaccines are halting infectious trans infections and transmission and hospitalizations, all the while looking the other way when so many vaccinated people die prematurely. Israel, for example, has 96.2% vaccination rate across the population now leads the world in COVID cases per capita. This proves the vaccine has the opposite effect of what we were promised in the name of, quote, science. In fact, the more a country vaccinates its people, the higher the COVID cases rise. That's because, of course, the vaccine actually is the pandemic. COVID would be over by now if not for the vaccine continuing to inject people with spike protein bioweapons that cause organ failure, micro blood clots, and death. No coincidence that vaccine injury symptoms are the then categorized as COVID by the corrupt and murderous medical establishment that receives financial kickbacks from the government for killing people with ventilators and remdesivir. This is, this is what's happening. And we have to understand that the people who are serving as the county health directors, they have to, they cannot question it or they will instantly lose their job. So you are the only ones, hopefully, that can actually question this narrative and protect the people from this happening. This has been going, this has been growing for decades, and now it's gotten to the point where the corruption is so powerful, and, and Big Pharma owns the media and most of the governmental agencies, and now people are being uh, really harmed by this. So I just want to emphasize that point. Please exercise courage and uh, 
ethical behavior so that this does not continue and don't continue to go along with the devastating impact that the so-called medical uh, devices are having. That, that's my comment. Thank you very much. Finished? I didn't hear his last statement, but okay. Thank you for that. And uh, it looks like we don't have any other hands up. A, I do. Yeah. yeah, I was just asked um, to speak uh, in public input, um, requesting the Middletown Unified School District Board meetings um, be uh, transitioned to Zoom participation for people that don't feel comfortable going to the board meetings in person. I know the board is considering that request and um, we'll have a special board meeting tonight. So I'm just officially, uh, making that request to that board for the safety for any all to participate. Thank you. Okay. All right. I think that uh, will conclude with public input. I'm not seeing any other hands, so we'll move on to item 6.2, presentation of proclamation mm -hmm. designating the month of February 2022 as Teen Dating Violence Awareness Month in Lake County. And we will have Vice Chair Scott will read, will read this proclamation. And if there's anybody in the uh, chambers that would like to come up and be part of it as well. I believe we have quite a bit of community support from uh, the Lake Family Resource Center. If you want to come up sure. and join me <laughs> as I read this. Board of Supervisors, County of Lake, State of California proclamation designating the month of February 2022 as Teen Dating Violence Awareness Month in Lake County. Whereas Teen Dating Awareness and Prevention Month reflects our community's growing understanding of violence within relationships often begin during adolescence and about one in three teens report being the victim of verbal, physical, emotional, or sexual violence. And whereas the modern efforts to address teen dating violence must include the realities of today's youth, digital tools such as cell phones, social network sites, and access to online gaming or entertainment plays major roles in teens' life. But they also allow predators to access our teens, and often it's under the radar of caregivers and safe adults. And whereas prevention of teen dating violence includes reducing the stigma and silence around the issues and provides safe space for discussion and education around healthy relationships and communication life skills. And whereas teen dating violence is a community problem, prevention includes support from the entire community and increasing awareness provides opportunities for more community members to come together and to discuss teen dating violence in our community and work towards a solution. Now, therefore, it be proclaimed that this month of February 2022 is designated as Teen Dating Violence Awareness Month in Lake County, and our community is urged to support the efforts of the agency assisting victims of teen dating violence and to increase our involvement in efforts to prevent teen dating violence, thereby strengthening our community and creating an environment which honors, nurtures, and protects all members of every family. Passed and adopted the 15th day of February 2022 and signed by our chair, uh, Crandall. <laughs> we have, oh, okay. Somebody wants to take that? And, and I would have to think with COVID, it's really probably put a lot of pressure on our teens and just bring an awareness. I, I, I know for myself as a parent with five teens, it's hard to keep track of what your teens are doing when they have their phone. So just being diligent, turn that Wi-Fi off at night. That's what I do. So they don't have access to it. I mean, we have, we have the capabilities of doing that. It's very simple now. So we just have to be aware, talk to our teens, have that open communication. And, and I just like, want to thank you for all your work that you do. Thank you. Yeah, this is, I'm uh, Sharon Mark, Communications Coordinator for Lake Family Resource Center. This back here, Lake Family Resource Center staff. And yeah, this is a very important issue to us for a lot of what you said, particularly in uh, today's world where we have such access to digital tools and our youth has that same access. And so really about this month is talking about it and talking to each other about it, talking to our kids about it, talking, having youth talk to each other about it and coming up with tools and resources and solutions in order to keep them safe and protected. Um, so we appreciate that you took the time to put a voice to this. 
Um, we do this awareness every February, um, and so we're glad that we were able to come to the county level this time, and we got everybody on board, and um, we're feeling good about the communication that's happening in the county, um, and particularly wanting to talk about digital tools and start looking at that for uh, prevention. So, thank you. I'm sure Sam wants to get a photo. Can you see everybody? Yeah. Okay, terrific. Thank you. 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 Are there any uh, Sorry, comments on the board? And I'm not seeing anything on public. I'll open it up for public input, and I'm not seeing anything there. So we'll bring in the next item, 6.3, presentation of proclamation designating the month of February 2022, Black History Month, and celebrating Martin Luther King's birthday. And Supervisor Sabatier will read the proclamation. Thank you very much, Chair Crandall, for the honor of reading this. Um, what I love about Black History Month to me is it's the American history of the struggle to make the, the words, all men are created equal, reality. And so thank you for being with me here, Rick Mayo, who is the president of the NAACP chapter here in Lake County. Proclamation designating the month of February 2022, Black History Month, and celebrating Martin Luther King's birthday. Whereas, the Lake County branch of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, NAACP, will celebrate a combination of Black History Month and Martin Luther King's birthday as we reflect on the proud legacy and courage and dedication from visionary leaders like Martin Luther King Jr., Elijah Cummings, African American military veterans, and the NAACP has been at the forefront of protecting voting rights of people of color in this county and continue addressing voter suppression, gerrymandering, and urging the passing of the John Lewis Voters' Right Advancement Act and the Freedom to Vote Act, which includes the restoration of the 1965 Voting Rights Act that will ensure all citizens' voting rights are protected under the United States Constitution. And whereas the NAACP history is one of dedication and struggle to maintain equality and justice for all citizens of the United States. And whereas the local branch, like other NAACP branches throughout the state and country, diligently works on social programs aimed towards the elimination of racial hatred, bigotry, and poverty. And whereas the Lake County branch of the NAACP is led by Rick Mayo, president and 1982 founder of the Lake County branch. Now therefore be it proclaimed that February 2022 is designated Black History Month and the Lake County branch of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People is commended on the vital role it has played in improving the quality of life in our local community and that the branch be extended, best wishes and continued success. Passed and adopted this 15th day of February 2022 and signed by our chair. Thank you, um, members of the Board of Supervisors. Uh, each year that you present this proclamation to us um, makes us realize how far we really have come. And we've been doing this close to 25 years here in Lake County now. And that's, 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 that's a long time to uh, still be trying to find the common ground that we need in order for all of us to coexist in this society. One of the things that I would like to speak on just briefly is, is that uh, our nation is at a crossroads. Uh, well, are we going to continue with our democracy? Are we going to fall into some type of, of aut aut autocracy. autocracy? Thank you. Autocracy. And it's up to us to maintain this democracy that we have. This is the best thing that we have going on, and we need to continue to protect the voting rights and other rights of the citizens of this country. And I appreciate this Board of Supervisors, you understand, for presenting us this proclamation. And the Lake County government reflects the diversity of this community. Thank you so much. I want to turn it over to my, uh, my cousin. 
Oh. Elmo Mosby. My name is St. Elmo Mosby. Uh, Rick Mayo is my first cousin. And uh, I have been active with the NAACP since I was about, I was a teenager because uh, we both grew up in the South and we did not have <clears throat> the things available to us that we have today as far as voting rights and a lot of other things that we were mistreated during that time. I have served 24 years in the Navy. I can recall when we were not accepted as well in the Navy. I'm now 80 years old, so I can remember a lot of these things. But I really appreciate the things that you have done here in Lake County. I've been a resident since 2004. And uh, I look forward to these proclamations each year. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> no, and you, yeah, thank you. How do you get <laughs>